Hello. Today we have this problem. In this case, we're tackling a set of natural numbers that does not include zero. That's the context from Olympiad location. Okay, now we have uh, to find our function that is satisfy this. First of all, there are mappings from natural numbers to natural numbers. Second of all, we were to take any number m that is divisible by n of the remainder r that is not equal to zero, and the value of that function with uh, that argument is going to be divisible by n with the remainder f of r. All right, so how is that any useful? Well, first of all, the most instant conclusion that we can draw is that f of r is less than n. And what we can do is we can plug in over the specific n. For example, we can pick k equals 1, and then pick any x, arbitrary. So x plus r mod x is going to be equal to f of r. So for every x, for every r that is less than x, well, obviously not equal to zero because that's part of the conditions. f of r is going to be less than x. Now what we can do is, for every x, we can pick r is equal x minus 1. So f of x minus 1 is going to be less than x. What we can do is, we can then do an offset. So x is less than or equal to x, or less than x plus 1, or however you want to write it. So how is that any useful? Well, uh, now what we can do is, first we can pick k is equal to 1. Again, now we were to review some x plus... What do we pick? Oh, let's pick 1, for example. And then it's going to be some t times x, when we divide by x, plus f of 1. Now, if we were to recall, it is a mapping of natural numbers to natural numbers, and f of x is less than or equal to x. So this implies that f of 1 is equal to 1, because it can be anything else. So, tx plus 1. Now, recall that equality again, tx plus 1 is less than or equal to x plus 1. Now what we can do is, tx is less than or equal to x. x is a natural number, so we can divide it on the both sides. So t is less than or equal to 1. Cool. Now another thing that we have to know is, tx plus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 1, or else it's not going to be a natural number, right? So, tx is greater than or equal to 0, and t is greater than or equal to 0. Cool, so we have two t's to tackle. t is equal to 1, and t is equal to 0. So how is that helpful? Well, let's plug that in. f of x plus 1. For t equals to 0, that's going to be just 1. And for t equals to 1, that's going to be x plus 1. So we have gotten ourselves two types of function. f of x is equal to x. f of x is equal to 1. And well, those would be two solutions. However, how do we prove that we can just uh, clump them in together in some wicked form where for some x is its 1, for some others it's x itself? Well, if some f of r is equal to 1, and r is not equal to 1, then this implies that f of uh, x plus r is going to be tx plus 1. What this implies is f of s plus r 
is going to be equal to, well, it can be equal to x plus 1, therefore it's equal to 1. Because, again, recall this inter uh, thing, it has to be 1. So we get a major part of functions just abstracted in a way. So uh, now we're going to take that R. What we can do is take some R plus some Q and then take R the remainder. That's going to be equal to 1. Again, Q is greater than or equal to 1. So for every i greater than, let's calculate this, we can equal to 2r plus 1. We can say that i is equal to 2r to plus some q. So we can say there exists a q. Like that. Which implies that f of i is equal to 1. So f of r equal to 1 implies that f of some x greater than or equal to r, to r plus 1 is also going to be equal to 1. Now, how is that detrimental? Well, suppose there is uh, r prime. This not equal to 1, eh? and suppose that f of r prime is not equal to, well, 1, eh? well then, we could pick some sufficiently uh, large number that would uh, have r prime as a remainder. So, let's pick some t times uh, Whatever, and that is greater than our prime plus our prime is gonna be tn plus f of our prime. So it's gonna be either 1 or tn plus our prime. Because this implies that f of our prime is equal to our prime. Okay, so which one is it? Well, again, we're talking about some sufficiently large one. And uh, it's not going to be a 1, because it can be 1. Again, if we were to plug in t is 0, then it's going to be f of r prime, which is not a possible value. So this is the only one that is left. But wait, we can pick t sufficiently large, such that it will be part of this. So we get a contradiction. In other words, if some... Uh, if for some r that is not equal to 1, the value of the function is 1, then the entire function is equal to 1. So we have gotten ourselves two solutions. f of x is equal to x, and f of 1 is equal to 1. That's it for today, yeah? I hope you liked it. Bye.